Alright, but we are to see it. <clears throat> oh, and we're back with, excuse that little frog in the throat at the beginning, we're back with How to Draw the Incredibles. We have done Mr. Incredible. We have done Mrs. Incredible, Elastigirl. And we are now going to do Jack Jack, the baby. He'll be fun and we'll do that. Anyway, do check out the links in the cards and the descriptions for all the How to Draw videos. Do like and subscribe for all the new How to Draw videos and other art vids that I'll be posting this year. And uh, just do share them with your friends. But anyway, we've done those two, so we're going to do today jack jack so let's get on with it so now we are going to put in that line right the way across the middle now i'll put this in quite light uh, to start with just so as we can divide the actual page up into quarters so it just helps and then we're going to use remember we are using shapes how to draw anything uh, the link is in the description and in the cards and that shows you how to draw anything using these dead simple shapes but anyway here so we're gonna just box everything up at first before we start putting the circles in so here we've got the bottom of little baby jacks chin and that's kind of halfway up at the top of his head is there and then there's going to be a rectangle where I mean it's going to be a little triangle off the top of his head but obviously we can we know that his head is going to got that angle you can see coming down through there through the the spike of his little pointy hair bit off the top but then we've got that box in first for his head and then if we put in uh, another rectangle shape here that's going to be his body his neck is going is quite tiny uh, which is coming down here and then we need his arms so his arms coming up is a rectangle shape and we'll put a little box there for that right hand and there's that rectangle and this one's coming straight out and that will include his hand which will be on the end there and now here we want a box which will contain his right leg and then here we want a rectangle for his left leg and his little left foot padder and his baby grow which is quite nice now again he hasn't got the logo on which is quite good but there we have a very quick shape put in quite fast for you so you can then start building up the other shapes and you can put other shapes inside you can if you want just go straight in using circles and all kinds of stuff uh, for his all the details but what we need is his cute little nose is going to be a little circle there and then his top lip is just a U and it's all you know like a slightly bendy big V and then you want his mouth coming down there so you got that nice smile little tongue a little curve a little u curve there inside but then he hasn't got teeth but he's got this top of his gum is just kind of peeking in there and we'll just indicate the sides of his mouth but there you've, you've used that center line to help you place the actual mouth of little baby Jack Jack we need to just move that over a little bit because it's more on this side than it is on this side so again we can just correct that and sort all of that out in a moment and we will be going in with the color so now what we need is we've got this great shape there's the top of his head and that's going to curve round to the side of his head round here and so we can bring that all the way down and his chin just he's got a little dink on his chin there and then that goes to the side and then what we need is the side of his head is kind of level with his nose here of his right hand cheek and so that can come all the way down to his chin and then we can join that up at the top and there you've got the basic shape now we can whack on quite easily we've got a box there for his ear and again if we put a little box there for that ear we can then introduce in a box for 
what will be his mask. We can actually introduce the actual shape of his ear inside that box. So again, we can just pull out to the top of his ear. And this is, remember, ears you can do like a C and a D as you're actually looking at it. So you've got the C shape, big capitals, letter C. But he's a little bit more stylized. It's not a completely curved like a normal cartoon. And so we draw that out to the edge and then that comes down to his little low bit at the bottom. And the same on this side. So we come over and we see this one is a little bit higher than his nose. And so that comes out horizontal flat and then goes out to the edge of his ear and then his ear lobe, you've got this little V shape that goes and joins. And so that is quite good. Now again, I've just gone a little bit too low so we can correct that because it's joint, the bottom of his ear layer is like with his chin. So if we just correct that line a little bit, and this is why you do the construction lines, they help you to lay it down. And we're doing this rather quick. So again, the V at the top of his mask is in line with his hair. So if we put his little spiky point of hair in the top, that's just a nice triangle shape inside there. And then if we kind of draw, imagine a center line coming down to his nose, then you know that we've got the top of his mask. The V of the top of his mask comes in here. And then that comes out and you can just follow the inside of the curve of the shape of the right hand side of Jack's head and that comes down and then the curve just slight following the line of underneath his nose and the same on this side you've got the curve coming out now again you've got a little bit more showing on this side than on this side so you've got a smaller gap between the edge of his mask and his head and you've got a slightly bigger gap here and it's also a little bit lower, they don't match. So it's a bit like a slightly raised eyebrow. So you can draw the top of this one just inside and then curve that underneath. Now we need to just whack in his eyes. So his eyes have got, they're a bit like, imagine a capital D but facing upwards. So if you turn the page sideways, you'd have the D. So what you've got here is just a nice D shape. So there's the back of the D and then the top. And you just want a slight little curve on the, the back of the edge. And the same on this one. So this one is a little bit thinner. So that's quite a wide one. And this one is a little bit thinner. And it's coming here to the side of the center line. And so we can indicate the edges curve and do that bit and it's actually got a little bit of a bend upwards and then his eye has got to come a little bit higher than this one so if you put a little mark at the top then you can draw your curve for what's the top of the D and you're kind of doing a dot to dot now his actual eyes eyeballs his pupils with his iris are circles Again, you can use a template if you've got one, if you want an absolutely perfect circle, but I'm just indicating these in. And you want a smaller circle inside for his dark black pupil. And that little circle there is to be the highlighter that we can leave. Now again, we can just finish that line up. And then this side is close in as well. And these are the same size. So make sure your circles are about the same size if you're doing them freehand like I am here. And then you can draw his pupil in and then do the circle to leave. Remember, you're leaving that one clear. Now I'm going to do the pen outline again on this and colour him in using felt tips and pencil crayons. And so now we can see where I've put that eye in, the top of his mouth is in the centre with his eye, which is fine. The side of here is on the side of this left hand side of his mouth is in line with the right hand side 
or left as you're looking at it of his left eye the pupil here so this is how using the shapes gets you to put things in place and in proportion correctly and it's a real bonus and it's a good help so i hope you're enjoying this because this again as i've said in all my other videos this is how i started i started doing cartoons copying cartoon characters the ones that i liked and enjoyed and so again top corner of his mouth this is where his neck now comes down and we can now just start putting in the detail of his baby grow so that's where his neck comes down and goes round a little kind of v there and then we want to come out to where his cuff is so if we bring you can see there the cuff will give you your reference points so we can bring that black cuff down there and you see that stands out a little bit more above the actual construction lines that we put in if we do the same here this cuff is in line just with this ear here but it comes above the center line the horizontal center line so again you want this kind of little curve going out that comes under and then you want and that's like a reverse crescent if you think of a crescent moon but going when it's going that way not in a c more in a d shape and this is all that you do with any drawing so there we've got his two cuffs in and again now we can just really bring in his hand quickly in fact what we need to do is alter the shape you can see there that I've got that above the center line and the side of his head needs to come down even more so what I've done is got that a little bit incorrect but this is the joy of drawing and setting everything up correctly so if I bring that down and we can just rub out that line what we have is the top of his thumb should go here and we've got the top of his mouth and his thumb should extend and go up and this ear should should be a little bit closer so now I can extend that ear out to match and if I just rub out that inside line and this is how good it is when you do these construction lines it helps you to correct things as you go along and you can sort out your actual lines as you go and that's the beauty of using these little simple techniques to correct everything so now what we need is there's the curve of his hand coming down and his finger his end finger that comes off from his thumb and you see just a simple rectangle there drawing the shape of his hand where his palm is and then his fingers come back and this finger extends a little bit further and they just kind of go in his little finger peaks above the center line so there's a rectangle for that little finger and then we want another rectangle or even just think like you know little sausages and then that finger points out there you got a little bit of a gap and then you've got the muscle on the inside of his thumb and the crease going across his hand now we've got right underneath his chin you've got a curve coming down there and there is quite a big shadow that's going to be underneath that his head's causing down on his right shoulder and we'll fill that in with colour in a little bit so we then have the right arm coming down and again you can see that that kind of lines up with the edge of his mask and then we need to bring that out so you've got the square as your line and you can actually bring that out which will be around his bum and then down to his right leg and then you've got his pad here inside this square and it's just a little curve 
Again, you can kind of see that's a bit of an elongated capital D and that's the edge of his foot. So put the front of his toes on and the side and then you've got his leg that comes straight up inside the inside of his thigh kind of goes straight up but just put that little curve in and we'll put the shadow in with the colour in a little bit so we then need to come out for his left leg and his left arm coming over in his left hand so here we've got again the shape so draw a box for the palm and then you've got his little finger and his thumb so we'll start with the thumb so you can kind of get this space going and just think little rectangles or little sausages so there's his thumb there's his palm there's that finger his index finger and then you want his little finger because he's kind of doing a funny shape with his hand and then his other two fingers are coming down hiding behind and you just got that one peeking out there behind his little finger and then you've got a little line inside his pad now this arm we've got his shoulder coming out here which is horizontal a little dink and then a big curve over the top now as you come down you can see from his pupil this is where the top where his chest is coming out and it just curves inside that little box line that you've drawn and we can bring that down and you can see that where it joins the top of his hip is kind of in line with that there of his left hip, his right hip, sorry, as you're looking at it on the left of your page, and his left hip, you've got a little fold of material, but it's in line with his pupil. And so again, now what we can do is use this little box reference, and you've got the reference points of his cuff and his hand, and you come down, and this little rectangle that you did for the bottom of his paddy, you can fill in with the kind of little wiggly shape inside that and that's the base of his paddy you can draw his ankle and then his leg going up and then the top of his foot comes down and then that goes up and you've got a little dink there a little fold of material and then we've got here just to the right of the center line you can indicate his zip now there, very quickly, is the outline using that very simple box section technique. And so now I'm going to do the actual outline in pen all the way, and then we can rub out. So I'm starting, I'm just following the line that I've actually put down. And I'm going all the way. So remember, from this side, use your arm, don't rest your arm flat on, but try and give your elbow and work from your shoulder. And follow the curve. And that comes down to where his chin is, and you've got this little dink for his chin, and then you can keep going and join that line up. Now again, using the curve of you from your shoulder, you can follow that line down and you've got all the way down his cheek. Now you can leave that and just go outside his ear and use your actual colour to create the side of his head but I'm doing the solid line on this one as you kind of would see in comics and cartoons and again different ones will do it in different ways so there's his ear and just got the top of his earlobe in and we want his left ear that comes out and I'm going to do from the bottom remember the these shapes are very simple and very quick. I've just put the top of his earlobe in. Now we've got his little spike of hair. And now, again, this is like a big capital B, but with the big bits at the top. So, and again, you've just got this nice set of curves and his nose comes above the top. So if we do his nose, the top of his nose, and then the bottom of his nose is a little bit of a V. And rather than the mask going right up to the top, it comes just out at the edge. These are little details that when you look, you'll pick up. And the more you do, the more that you'll see. So I'm just following that line, which is like a, a bee that's fallen over. And joining that just to the side. 
Now again, these are the D's that I said, like a big capital D. This one's got a slight curve going under, which is concave, not convex. And this one's got a slight convex line going out like a lens. If you think cave, it goes in like a C. Convex, it curves out. So now we're going to draw the line going up over the top. I'm drawing the circle for the highlight. And right round his pupil, circle for the outline, his pupil, and then his iris round the outside. And now his little neck, I say, oh, actually, we'll do his mouth. So you've got his top lip. Again, this is just like a big U or a V that's curved. So again, we're going to come down from this side and it just starts a little bit in from his top lip and that goes right to the center line and then you can take that up right to this corner and then you've got his little mouth his tongue in his mouth and you've got the shadow and we can sort that out rather than paint it in but then you've got his top gum that comes right the way over and he's got no teeth so there's Jack Jack's head down. I hope you're enjoying this. This is good fun. I know these are taking a bit longer than the quick pencil drawings, but I just thought I'll do these full colour uh, just because they're fun. So I know they're about 40 minutes rather than 20. But all the previous videos that I've done of lots of other characters just do the pencil lines. So you can go and check those out. Check out the How to Draw playlist. And we need his neck going up here and his little neck following the curve down. But do check them out because I used all the techniques just to encourage you and show you how simple it is. Oh, that's interesting. I've missed the bottom of his arm off. But again, rather than going back to the pencil, you can just fill in with the pen. You see here, I've just got the line and his arm actually comes down. So uh, underneath the line of the construction line of the rectangle so i'm going to draw his chest out and it goes up at, a, at an angle doesn't follow the line horizontally so there you go so now we can draw on his thumb and that's like i say that little sausage line and then you've got the top of his pad and then this finger goes out and we want to do the little finger first and then the line coming out under his palm to his little finger and then you've got here a little finger sticking out which goes to there and we've got these little lines in between and then we've got the last finger because he's kind of making a funny shape with his hand again we'll do this right hand now so you've got his thumb little thumb coming down over to the top and you got the little pad of the flesh of his thumb top going to his pointing finger and then you got the middle finger and then we want this one and then his little finger And the hand coming around to his arm now again just follow the right arm down curve under his armpit all the way down to his bottom down to his foot and again his right leg follow that curve in the black base of his paddy and then the top outside has just got a little bit underneath going down his left leg then we've got this fold of material here, the top of his leg coming down. Follow the pad it over and just follow the shape round. And that's the outline of Jack Jack down completely. And now we're just going to erase out the centre. 
get rid of the construction lines just so as when we put the colour down <clears throat> it'll go down kind of clean and quick and that's remember how I say with the felt tip pens and light colours of pencil cranes you can pick up the pencil line and even suck up some of the ink So just you can make it as clean as you want <clears throat> and try and make that work uh, for you in your colouring in. So we'll start the colouring in now and <clears throat> just need to make sure I have got all of the colours that I am after. Ah that's the lighter one. So remember just you can have a spare bit of paper and you can utilise that to check your colours first and I want these kind of lighter orange bits first before I put on all of the other red and I'm using a mix of cheap felt tip pens from Poundland and pencil crayons again you can colour in anything you want you can just use pencil crayon if you want you can just use wax crayons or you could just use felt tips but just filling this in really quick all the way over again you've got this highlight here which is a lot more orange and so that's why I'm using that and again don't be afraid to go over the lines if you're doing something that's complex and is going to take a long time then take a long time on the actual work that you're doing so again here I've a raised out uh, is kind of zipper so I'm going to put that back in but we've also got uh, folds so I'm just going to indicate some of those using the slightly darker red and the reason I'm using the mix of colors is just to show you I can remember when when I actually went to art college we used to have to produce lots of work in progress sheets to kind of show what we were thinking and what we were up to when it was to do with designs and we used rather than just one medium of say pencil crayons or paint or markers we were encouraged to use all different kinds of medium so we would mix pencil and paint and felt tip pens and crayons and spray and collage and all kinds of things so it's just something that you can do in when you've got a mix of materials you can just have fun and you can change so many things just with the very simple quick use of multiple different colours and you can layer the colours and it helps you get a, a broader palette and that's the thing with felt tip pens you're kind of stuck this is the colour that goes down and that's it and you're going to struggle to make it uh, show anything else so this is a kind of darker dusky orange and that's giving me some shadow lines that I can then build on with the pencil crayons and so I'm just whacking these on so again you've got the shadow coming down from Jack Jack's head now I'm going to use a thicker darker red this is a much zingier red to kind of fill in this bit and you can see I'm really working quickly again down the side of his leg all the way down here to just block that in rather quickly to give the body a lot of colour form 
But that's only halfway. The dark shadows will really increase and intensify that in a moment. Now, just move my ruler out of the way. And I want the flesh to. Before I'm putting the dark on, I'm just going to fill in. So again, I've got this kind of pinky fleshy tone colour. I'm just going to fill in all of his hands and his head. And again, rather than indicating the shadows just yet, I'm just filling it in so as we can get a lot of colour down. So as we can actually see the full shape coloured in and taking a lot more form but and the top of his head is lighter but the form becomes kind of more real when you're colouring in your character. Again if you're using paint choose a brush size that's appropriate to what you are trying to do. Now again, all down here, his nose has got a light highlight on the top and it's darker underneath. So I'll just indicate that with the side of the pencil crayon as we go. Gently there. Because all down here is much darker and we can darken that up with other colours in a moment. He's got much more of a shadow and his cheeks are red and rosy and the top of his head is lighter because that's where the light's coming down. Now that's filled that in quite nicely. Let's do his ear. Now his hair, I'm going to fill in first with this kind of little brown felt tip colour. And again, draw in the way he's like his hair's twisted up. So draw in using the tip of the felt tip pen, which helps. And then his eyes, I'm lightly putting some grey in because they're curved. You need to have a little bit the light's coming from this direction because you've got the white highlight there but underneath here and down in the inside you can use a little bit of light grey and a little bit of light blue and a little bit of a say an ivory type colour a creamy colour if you want and again you just make up your colours you know you don't just have to stick to grey or to blue so there we've put the grey down. I'm just putting a little bit of blue in and there's a bit more blue on this side. A little bit darker. And then we want a kind of ivory colour. So I'm just going to use this but very lightly to indicate on this side. You can hear it's much lighter rather than pressing on very, very hard. Now, his eyes are a much darker blue at the top, coming down to a lighter blue. So, if we put the lighter blue at the bottom of his iris, and then we put the darker blue remember don't go over your white highlight that you've left and now if we colour down the dark bit underneath and there's something about doing eyes as well when you, if you do the eyes first they kind of look at you and they stare out and, and give you a good reference point. Remember dark at the top, leave your little white highlight. Just darken the edge of 
around the pupil and the edge of the iris. Now I'm going to get my black marker pen because we've filled in quite a bit. In fact I've missed a bit of flesh. So if you just put the, a bit of, bit of pink, a bit of flesh colour on the edge of his tongue and we'll put the red on in a minute. And I've done the top of his gum. So there we go. So we can put that down. And now if we put the black on, you've got black on his cuff. This is all very flat, just filling in the large areas. And then we can do the more... 3D form in a moment using the pencil cranes to give us a lot more depth and shape. So there's on his baby girl that's kind of showing out and again underneath his chin here and down this side you've got more of a shadow but it's not as black as these so we'll use the pencil cranes to do that rather than the felt tip but in his mouth we want the nice dark. Try not to go over the tongue at the front and we can fill in all of that shape and now we can do the mask. Again, I'm using, rather than the direct point, I'm using the side of the pen because it fills in a much bigger space. And I'm doing my best to not go over the lines. So that we don't disturb the flesh on Jack-Jack's head or his eyeball. So go carefully around the edge of the mask and the eyeballs and then you can fill in quickly the big spaces in the mask but then you know you've got a nice clean line around Jack Jack's eyes because the mask is all filled in nice and quickly and that's that's looking quite good, even just as that is now. But now we're going to give him a lot more form and shape. And we'll do that with the pencil crayons. So I'm going to need blues and purples and some browns. A bit of a chestnut brown. We need this kind of lilac-y colour. So if we use these we can start to build up more colour and shade. So again, this kind of nice pinky to lilac shade that's just down the side of Jack Jack's head down here. And just a little bit on this ear. That goes down that side. And that's just like some strange little bit of light that's coming in. Now we need like these reds and oranges. So he's got, you know, a baby, he's got quite nice flush cheeks. Coming down underneath his nose, got a nice bit of red. You've got the shadow down this side. And all over here, you've got this kind of shadow, but it's got this really nice reddy tinge coming down over his chin and I'm just building up the layers just by covering over the way you would with the pencil cross hatching doing the same with the pencil cranes just so that it's got a bit of form and shape I'm doing the edge of his head down to this ear and right the shadow underneath the bottom of this ear and then the side of his cheek really starting to 
develop and build up the shadows and shape down the side at the bottom underneath of his hand the side of his fingers and his thumb again the same here the underneath of the pad tops of the fingers you've got that crease line going down and then underneath with those fingers as you've got the shadow going down now what I'm going to do is just use this kind of earthy colour to start helping to build up the shadows again his neck is completely underneath and in shadow so we need to increase the shadow the lights coming down from this side underneath his nose this earthy color will just cool it and help intensify shadow shapes underneath and again you can experiment with other colors you can experiment with blues and all kinds so right now I'm gonna put in a lot more of this purpley color and we've got it coming off his nose Filling in the side of his cheek and his face. Then we can go back on with the flesh colour. And the flesh colour we can intensify the shadow as it goes around the corner and over the top of his head here. Just to start building up the form. And we need to come in on this cheek build this one up, crease over his mouth, underneath his nose, underneath the top of his lip, and then the side of his chin coming down, that's going to be a lot darker, but here we've got the side of his ear <clears throat> a little bit of shadow there you can see it's just starting to fill and look a little bit more rounded so now we can do his left hand going up to that finger and we can bring this flesh now increase it over the, the purple as well down the side of his mask the edge of his ear before it goes really cool in the shadow and the top of his cheek here we've got a nice light bit coming down before we increase the shadow as well So now I'm going to use blue. Blue's a good cool colour for shadow. And again, we can increase that to give it a little shape. Think of a little pyramid here. And this is the pyramid shape that you've got for Jack Jack's cheek. The edge of his nose now we're going to come back in with this kind of brown color over the top it's kind of nice chestnutty brown and I'm just building the layers up little by little <clears throat> as I did in the others just to increase the shadows <clears throat> so 
there we have I need to <coughs> excuse me just got a frog in my throat increase the color of the flesh <coughs> what we need is there we go <coughs> a bit more of a ready purple color now And this is where, when you've got actual pencil crayons, you have quite a limited range of colours. To work with and to actually build up your actual image. And the more the more colours you've got, the more range you've got, the better you can obviously do. So here, I'm now going to fill in using that purple again. And we can come round and his mouth and the top of his tongue we need to fill that in and we can bring the dark in on that in a moment now his mouth inside is going to be in shadow so let's get that colour to just darken that down So here we've got this kind of darker brown again now and I'm really increasing the shadow underneath and we need the side of his mouth and this patch down underneath his left cheek and then going up again just follow the shape and the form of the lines that you put in and that will give you and now we need this shape coming out over his cheek and you've got this kind of shade line coming up here Fill that in. <laughs> now we've put all of these base colours down to give us the full tone, and then we want this intensifying this line down where he's the side of his mouth and down Jack Jack's chin. going up to the side of his head and now I'm going to go back over the top with this flesh colour to really blend all of those shadows in together as best as you can now obviously the longer you spend the better and easier it is to actually work. Now I'm pressing on quite tough here to push this pencil around but this is what's giving me the, the actual tone and the colour that I'm after. Because Jack Jack is obviously a baby, he should have really nice, soft, smooth, 
baby skin and that's why I'm <clears throat> showing you how by putting these colours in underneath <laughs> you can intensify everything but I'm doing these as really quick fast sketches not something that would be say a finished portrait and this is just good fun and I hope you're enjoying this as well so you just increase that down over the top of his head and up the side of his head now what we need is back with that dark colour for this ear just to increase the shadow in there it's got that little highlight on the top again darker shadow there little bling for his kind of earlobe darker shadow underneath now here if we increase the dark down got this kind of shade tone going up the side and you've also then got the side of his mouth going up a little bit of shade underneath his nose and we can increase that down this side we need a little bit more of a line there so now if we come back with that purple kind of lilac colour up the side of his head it's kind of getting a bit shapely and having a bit more form now again increase the amount of flesh on this cheek but now we're going to put in a little bit more red again I'm going to use the flesh colours and the pencil crayons over the top of the black so just to create a bit of highlights actually on the black just to indicate shape and form you got kind of up the bridge of his nose and again this is where the light's coming from this side and just very slightly if we use the grey on this side that then gives the actual mask a little bit of form too and you've got that kind of grey you've got the shape coming down there Now we're going to just detail up Jack Jack's hair again follow the kind of twist as it goes up the little lines so I'm using that dark brown first and then I'm going to use this lighter colour for a highlight on this side and then a little bit of orange in the twist Putting the darker down on that side again I'm going to put a little bit of blue in I'm putting that little bit of blue in there now 
Now we're going to add a little bit more flash over that ear where I put that darker colour down. And this is something I've said before, it's easier to add dark than it is to add light. So I'm just trying to calm down the intensity of the shadow on this right hand cheek. But what we need is a much darker, oh there we go, there's the black kind of indication down on this side. So I'm very very lightly, so you've got where his mouth comes up, we need to bleed in the tongue into the shadow. Again I'm using the pencil crane just to add little bits of shape and form. So if we then get the red and increase his cheek here and again flush his cheeks up on this side. It's quite a lot, even though there's a very simple shape and you're trying to do the colours, there's actually quite a lot in Jack Jack. It's because his head's so large, the colour, you just have to think about it as you do it. So now his cheeks are like really nice and flushed now down this right hand side. So now I'm actually going to get a white crayon and increase the highlights on these top parts. Again, it's just un like underneath where <laughs> his mask joins and down here on the top of his nose. And when you use this and then right on the, the top of his head and you can use white as a kind of really nice blending tool. <laughs> and you can see there how his cheeks just started to lift up a little bit. Again, tip of his tongue and the top of his lip underneath his nose and then you want down here coming all the way around his lip <laughs> using the white crayon you just give him that little bit more form <laughs> and Jack Jack is quite complex set of shapes. When you're using pencil crane you've got to think again in shapes but you've got to think using the colour to create the tone that you want. The highlights on the top of that ear, again the top of the hand. Oops, I've actually broke my pencil. Excuse me while I just sharpen it. So again if you break your pencil it might be because you've actually broken it or damaged the pencil itself by knocking it off the table like I've just done with those. But again that's just part of the fun of the drawing process. Here, let's pick up my pencils again. Now we need a shade underneath his hand and underneath that finger intensifying underneath that thumb again underneath that one and we've now that's looking quite groovy really and we now need to work on his romper suit very quickly so I need the blues and reds. I don't need the fleshy tones so much. So I am going to quickly 
whack in just some red over the top over the felt tips that I put down because that will give me a little bit of colour key with the crayon to fill in and what we need is that red and a kind of bit of orange reflected in off his suit onto the underneath of his face because the light comes down hits the red and then goes up so you can do those kind of things I need that brown again he's got a bit more of a darker line just under the bottom of that ear so that's looking pretty groovy and so now what I'm going to do is use the blue we've got this shadow here we've got one all the way down underneath his arm here big shape there another kind of oval shape there and not so much down here and all underneath this leg and this foot and all underneath this arm and underneath the top of here so I'm putting the blue in first rather than just going in straight with black and you can do it a little bit lighter but darker where the big shapes are and you can see how very very quickly this is now giving Jack Jack's body a lot of shape and a lot of form and you want the orange on the top there that's going to go up as so when you mix the red and the blue you get a nice kind of purpley dark purple colour we need that and then that's the shape really coming together we need some just little cross hatching there so I'm now going to go back in with the red pencil crane and that gives me just on the edge as I say the darker red that I'm after and you can do these and indicate inside the folds and then down on his romper suit and then if you get your black and again there's creases in here if you then do the black and kind of cross hatch and scratch that in you can see how quickly that's just become such a dense intense colour rather than just putting black down straight again on this bit under his arm don't go right to the edge because you've got the little bit of reflected light underneath and then that it's a bit like a V there that shadow coming up and then you've got the edge of his seam of his romper suit coming down and then inside this big shape here you've got that black which will come out again this fold that goes down under this leg and all of a sudden Jack Jack's looking pretty three-dimensional again now we've got this really intense you've got his chest coming out and you've got the edge of his collar and his head going out there but now you can see how putting the black on last mixing it in amongst the other colors makes it so much richer and because it's got the red and the blue in it gives it much more vibrancy than just putting straight black down now I'm going to come back in with the brown a little bit and the 
black and the red just to indicate his zip line and then finally I've got a nice highlight orange again like we did with the white you can work these in on the top and you got that cuff going around there you got a little highlight going down on that cuff and you got this left leg and they give you the full shape. I'm going to go back in with a more orange than the lighter orange just to fill in that shape and that space. So now where is putting this kind of creamy colour in now. Just to can give a little bit extra tonal value to Jack Jack's flesh. Because it isn't just pink or just one flesh colour. And then Finally, on his flesh colour, this pinky colour just lighting up this edge. <sighs> and you know, absolutely finally, what I've actually missed. <laughs> The actual dog, his pupils. Gosh, that would have been strange missing that out. I'm going to deepen the black around the outsides. Of his iris and just put some little cross hatches in. Oh gosh, how did I nearly miss those? again you can keep fiddling this is the thing with drawing you can keep drawing and working on it to your heart's content I just like adding a little bit of red in on his tongue now and then and this is something that you can do and you can keep on doing and building up so I'm just trying to find my flesh color oh. And you can keep building and building and building and eventually you have to say right that's enough I've done now and I think Jack Jack is getting quite close to that point again even down here he's got this you know, we can put in these little highlights underneath again I'm using a very light blue And you can just experiment with the colour. And where's my black? Because there's a bit of a sharp line over his nose there. But I'm quite happy with that. I hope you are. That's Jack Jack done. Again, just experimenting with colours, felt tips and pencil crayons. And you can see how much you can develop and draw and build a drawing from start to finish anyway i hope you've enjoyed that please do like and subscribe for more how to draw videos in the future thanks tedar